Hello, thank you for joining us for this little Zoom presentation. My name is Catherine Mossman. It's November 5th, 2021 in Tiny, Ontario. This is a little presentation about uh, the truth about Merlin, King Arthur, Excalibur, and the Holy Grail. It's based on various contact reports, as you can see on the slide by Billy Meyer, uh, done in 2008, as well as some extractions from Goblet of the Truth, where there was further information about this these interlinked um, subjects. So, here we go. Marilyn was born on May 1st, 449 AD. Merlin means the one with great knowledge. The Welsh version of Merlin is Myrden, and Myrden means the laughing one. His last name was Emrys, which is Welsh, and it means Ambrosia or Ambrosius. So, Merlin was also called Myrden, and he was either Emrys or Ambrosius, as you'll see that comes up in the uh, presentation. Merlin's mother, Queen Morden, was a daughter of the King of the Demeter region, and as you can see where it is there, just out sticking out in the promontory of at the end of Wales. This is what it looks like now. There's a Pembrokeshire Coast National Park in that area. Merlin's father, King Morvan, was a visionary with uh, paranormal abilities, and Merlin also shared in these gifts. These capabilities led to Merlin being referred to as a scion of the devil, a magician and or a sorcerer. Unfortunately, the naivety and simplicity of the Christian interpretation held that Merlin and his father's paranormal abilities meant that they were satanical and that father and son were allied with the devil and thus bothered by the devil. And this is where Dinas Braun Castle is located and that is where Marilyn lived a great part of his life and did a lot of his work. So it's located about 250 kilometers up the coast or uh, further away from his uh, uh, originating uh, time there in the Demeter region further back down up that peninsula. Currently that area is called Dembyshire and that might not be the right pronunciation. Apologies to any Scottish people watching this. At that time, the area was called Simu, which meant, um, which was the word for Wales. Here's a picture of the Dinos Bran Castle, sort of a more of a, an artistic rendering of what it used to look like. And below you can see the, the remnants of it as it is now, quite the valley that it was located over. And that valley was also called Dinos Bran. So that's another picture of the same area. Merlin eventually became known as the Druid of Camelot. He received his initiation when he was just nine years old, but he was not a magician nor a sorcerer as he was falsely declared to be by the Christians at the time, but he was a, a well-versed Druid in many different fields of knowledge. He was a bard, a doctor, a teacher, a prophet, a historian, and ultimately the prince and the king of the Druids of the Demeter tribe from South Wales. And this whole area was the homeland of the Celts. By the year 466, at 17 years of age, Merlin had already been contacted by the Playaran by the name of Caraduena. Caraduena was a sister of Ta's grandfather, thus Sfat's father, and his name was Ezekiel. For those of you who are not familiar with Billy Meyer's contact persons, Sfat was Billy's first contact person. And they started their contacts in 1942 when Billy was five, and they remained in contact until Sfat's death in 1953, as you can see on the slide. As an interesting side note, uh, there exists in Welsh lore stories of a goddess or a witch or a sorceress, depending on which source you're referencing, named Saraduin. The Saraduin had magical powers, etc. The lore refers back to approximately the 6th century, which is around the time of Arthur, Merlin, and Caraduena. And so it's a strong possibility that there is some truth to the fiction of this legendary figure of the white goddess. And it's come named Saraduin. And given that in the retellings and in the rewritings throughout the ages that fantasy and actuality 
is obscured and thus things become interwoven. It is possible that Caradwina is one and the same as Saradwin, but it will be a long time before we actually know the reality of this matter. Interestingly, Caradwina was sent on a mission to instruct Merlin in the teachings of Henoch on behalf of the High Council. Also in interesting is that the Celtic philosophy parallels very much the teachings of Henoch in many aspects. To be clear, Caradwina was not an Ishrish. Ishrish means a female goddess of wisdom. A god or a goddess simply means someone who stands higher in knowledge and wisdom than kings and other humans and is not a term to be confused with the religious semantics wherein a god is the anthropomorphic creator of the universe and everything in it. A god or a goddess was always a human being. So, Caradwena was a learned instructor or teacher in certain matters and thus also a conveyor of the Hanok's teachings, of Hanok's teachings. Caradwena also told him many things about the about the future that she had already explored through her own Faraushung, which means foreseeing a future, which some of which Merlin used and attributed to him himself, calling them prophecies. Merlin, being a Celtic druid, was chosen because the High Council hoped that with his help, future King Arthur, who, according to a Vorashau, one of these viewings into the future, was to be born on January 4th, 469, and he would transform Henoch's teaching, teachings of love, peace, harmony, and freedom, and equality for all people into reality. At that point in time, Arthur's birth was still about two to three years away. The goal of the hoped for dissemination of this information to the barbaric Celts, amongst whom Merlin lived, was that they would refrain from degenerate barbarity and their bloody battles. Thus, Merlin's teachings and learnings were enhanced by Caradwena's instructions. As well, he had developed great visionary skills based on his practiced meditations. Merlin was unaware, however, that she was an extraterrestrial. Caradwena, on her part, was strongly taken with Merlin and actually fell in love with him because he did much good for the people and he was also very wise. Because of this, she fulfilled several of his wishes as he realized on several occasions that she had, as he, as she, when he realized that she had skills far beyond anything he could explain as a druid. Unfortunately, Merlin was also often fickle and vacillating, which is why he also did things that were directed against the good, making Cara Duena very saddened and even angry. Consequently, she ultimately ended her secret relationship with Merlin of which really no one knew anything. One of Merlin's prophecies was the dragon prophecy made at Dinas Emrys, Fortress of Emrys or Ambrosius respectively. Note his last name. This is very well known besides those which he made in the wilderness of Caledonia in his later years. According to the legends, this prophecy was made when he was a young man and resulted in him gaining ownership of the castle, hence the name. According to the legend, King Vortigern was trying to erect a defense tower in the region of Gwynedd, Wales. However, every night after his men worked on it all day, it was found collapsed in the morning. The king's wise men counseled King Vortigern that it would only be fixed if the blood of a child born without a mortal father were to be sprinkled on the site. Thus they found Myrden, AKA Ambrosius, due to his last name. This is the name the legend referred to him as. So, due to his being born to a father who was a scion of the devil, quote unquote, thus the son of an incubus, hence not mortal, he was the ideal candidate and was brought to the site where they were prepared to sprinkle his, his blood about. However, Merdin was able to convince the king that the reason for the collapse was the fact that there existed a pool or a lake underneath the foundation. And in that pool or the lake were two dragons who were battling it out and they were destroying the uh, the building efforts one dragon was red and the other white these prophesied the coming of king arthur the red dragon and his goals of expelling the saxon invaders the white dragon this spared his life and the king ended up giving the castle to merlin what became of the problem with the collapsing buildings 
We don't know. Maybe it was a lake under there, some kind, or a spring. We'll never know. Now, a little explanation about the Grail and its relationship to Merlin before we move on to Arthur. A Grail was a place, a sacred place, not a chalice, as we've been led to believe. This place had a natural water spring and was usually located on a mountain that the Celts considered to be a nature sanctuary. These holy places were intended as places of meditation for the Druids. Thus, a grail is where a Druid's grove would be erected, surrounded by trees and other plants, and is where they meditated in deep consciousness related interconnection with the water, the earth, the plants, as well as with the inexhaustibleness of life. Grails were numerous and indeed existed wherever Druids lived and fulfilled their obligations. However, at the place with the water source where Merlin, the then Druid of Camelot, meditated, a vessel was linked to the well, known as the Cauldron of Abundance. This 33 centimeter wide cauldron was meant to collect water at the divine Ceridwin Spring. And note that uh, association again of Merlin and the divine spring bearing the same name as the Welsh equivalent of Ceridwena. This picture is something I cobbled together and certainly is not a true representation of the Cauldron of Abundance. Of, of abundance. You'll have to use your imagination a bit here. The cauldron was made of bronze and decorated with a ruby about the size of a cherry and three small semi-precious stones, rose quartz, were placed in the shape of a triangle around that ruby. And as previously stated, uh, Marilyn received a copy of Henoch's teachings from Caraduena. And it, those, those teachings that he uh, received represented the first part of what is now Goblet of the Truth, which has been written on Earth and put out in this last few decades. He memorized this first section and then locked it and sealed it in the cauldron of abundance and removed it from that grail. At the Grail, he put another cauldron in its place, which he and all Druids then called the Cauldron of Life. Over the years and centuries after this time, Christian writers changed the word Grail to mean the actual vessel, or cauldron, or chalice, into which Myrdan put Caraduena's transcript transcription of Henoch's teaching. This is a fabrication woven into the stories and passed down through the ages as, ages as scripture, which are nothing but falsehood and fantasies. Grail was a place and had nothing to do with the apparent Holy Grail of Christianity, which was only based on lies and deception. It never existed and therefore was not used by Joseph of Arimathea to collect the blood of Emmanuel, aka Jesus, at his crucifixion as Christian lore attests, which on top of everything represents a mishmash of different time periods, given that Mirden existed about 350 years after the death of Emmanuel. The true Holy Grail only existed as a holy place. And now we have the Goblet of the Truth, which is today's receptacle of Henoch's lineage of teaching. Okay, so this brings us to the uh, origins of King Arthur, particularly nine months before his birth, to be exact beginning with the desires of his father, King Uther Pendragon, who was part of the Tudor lineage. The term Pendragon referred to his place as the chief dragon or the high warlord. He and his wife, Queen of Tudor, lived at Tentagel Castle, which was in the current region known as Cornwall, UK, as you can see on the map there, and some of the remnants of that castle can be seen as well. Uther Tudor Pendragon fell in love with Queen Igrena of Cornwall, the young and beautiful wife of Gorlois, Duke and Prince of Cornwall. Igrena, however, was faithful to her husband and did not show interest in Uther. So Uther Pendragon sought the support of Merlin and devised an intrigue to abduct her, the Queen of Cornwall, and to seduce her. Merlin lured Gorlois away from his castle on a pretext in order for Uther to secretly snatch Igrena at night. 
A confidant of Marilyn, who was also a servant to Queen Agrena, then administered a drug to her, and she reached a hallucinogenic state and loss of ability to, to determine over and remember her own actions. So, Igraina was kidnapped from her castle and taken to a certain place where Uther and several male and female druids were already assembled under Merlin's leadership. Inside the circle, they then formed Uther and the drugged Igraina performed the procreation of Arthur. Uther Tudor had Gorlois killed by his own bloodthirsty knights on the very same night. The first contact about this stated, Quote, the plan he devised with Merlin thus ended with complete success, unquote. However, a later contact with Billy clarified that the assassination was not Merlin's idea. The kidnappers killed the king of their, on their own accord because Gorlois threatened them with the death penalty and took a stand against them. The happy end result for King Uther was that Igraine's husband was now out of the way. When Gor Gorlois' dead body was returned to Tintagel, Igraine was already back home but was now made pregnant by Uther and was still highly intoxicated by the drug and did not realize what had really happened. It was not until much later that she learned everything. And actually, the liberal Celtic marriage laws did not overvalue lifelong physical fidelity. Thus, while Gorlois, the late Duke of Cornwall, was deceived and cheated by the fraud King Arthur and killed by his men, he and Queen Igraine could, by law, engage in sexual acts with others. So, as prophesied, King Arthur, or Artus, King of the Celts, was born on January 4th, 469 AD. Merlin turned 20 in that year in May. Arthur ended up being Merlin's protege and pupil for seven years. Merlin presented the Cauldron of Life to his protege and pupil Arthur when he was 16 years old in the year 485 after Merlin had thoroughly instructed Arthur and his knighthood in Henoch's teaching, and after Arthur had fought his first battle against Anglo-Saxon slash Germanic invaders led by King Aele of Sussex. Arthur later married Guinevere. They lived at a castle called Camelot. And it's not known exactly where Camelot is. Uh, and that was where also Merlin was a Druid of Camelot but latest uh, archeological finds have found that it, it is definitely somewhere in Wales. So as much as we know about that. And uh, Guinevere, white spirit, glowing spirit. Interesting, she had a, a name. I guess all names have a meaning. So anyway, a little side note, however, as we've all, all know from our history, is that Guinevere had a lover who was Sir Lancelot. And that was one of Arthur's trusted knights of the round table. So despite Merlin's best efforts, Arthur and his bloody knights thirsted for blood and vengeance, and they strictly rejected the teachings of Henoch that Merlin had been imparted to Arthur because he did not want to give up their killing and their conquest. Arthur thus became very upset and angry at Merlin and cast the gift of the Cauldron of Life into the sea with his own hands, although he later reconciled with Merlin. According to legend, Merlin gave the sword of Excalibur to Arthur. However, we need to back up a little bit in order to give some history on this origin of this sword. That sword was actually called the Kalid Kalidvich sword, pronounced Kalidfluch, and it was actually a light ray weapon in the shape of a sword. It was forged on the Isle of Avalon under the guidance and with the participation of Caraduena, who later gave it as a gift to Merlin originally. Where exactly the Isle of Avalon is also remains unknown. Among the locals, it was referred to as a lightning sword because it emitted lightning-like rays. It later became known as Clyburn and was rendered falsely by the church and its Latin language as Excalibur, as we all know it today. Arthur then fought many bloody battles with this light ray sword. Caradine Duena was very upset about all of this and all of her efforts to regain possession of the sword because it had been abused failed. Caradine was very ang with, angry with Merlin but could not persuade him to demand Arthur's sword back and return it to her. She had already angrily ceased contact with Merlin at the time when Arthur committed his first murderous deeds with the sword. 
Merlin also picked up the sword and fought with it, and he used his skills in military operation and operations and as Arthur's military advisor, contrary to the instruction and wishes of Caraduena, however, without becoming morally bankrupt. Merlin also fought with his sword against the warlike Christian intruders who stole into the country through murder and arson, killing off or suppressing the population in order to spread the Christian faith, conquer the land, and destroy Celtic philosophy and beliefs. It was only after Arthur's death that the sword was reclaimed by Merlin and returned to Caraduena, after which she destroyed it and left Earth returning to Era. Arthur died at the age of 40 on August 11th, <clears throat> 509, in the Battle of Camlan, in a battle which, with his nephew, Prince Medrout. Arthur was a brutal and stubborn man to whom human life meant little or nothing. In the event of any remaining doubt, it is necessary to disabuse anyone of the bucolic picture of King Arthur being a gallant knight. Contrary to today's depiction of him having been a hero or the like, he was absolutely not a courtly king, nor a knight in shining armor, nor a good-hearted and noble hero. King Arthur, or King Artus, was a fierce 6th century clan leader, a war king who led his pagan warriors in bloodthirsty battles and raids. He was a slaughterer and kept the name as the Boar of Cornwall. His infamous knights of the round table truly were bloodthirsty thugs. After Merlin's last fight, when he was 66 years old in the year 515, at the lost battle at Erfderid, Merlin fled and settled, settled down in a remote area in the wilderness of Caledonia, in the Cheviot Hills, where he lived as Myrden Welt, which meant Merlin in the wilderness. He lived there for some time and then returned to his hometown, where an old female druid named Niniani, also known as Nimu, joined him and was a good friend to him. When he felt his death approaching, Nimue finally accompanied Merlin to Yinis Enil, a.k.a. Bardsey Island now, which he had chosen as his death place. He died there in the arms of the old druid on June 14, 542, at the age of 93, and he was buried by the wise woman in a rocky cave according to his wishes. And so ends this little presentation with the obvious questions left hanging. Is it possible that the spirit form inhabiting Merlin was that of the Nocodamian spirit form lineage? It sort of makes sense given that there are a number of compelling factors, one being the ET connection with Caraduena being a close relative of those who have been Billy's primary contacts. Also, the High Council's involvement in sending Caraduena on the mission to convey the teaching of Henoch slash Nocodamian to Merlin, thus the same teaching that Eliah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Emmanuel, all were responsible for imparting in the centuries before Merlin. Also, Merlin being entrusted with an advanced laser weapon by Caraduena, and given Merlin's advanced consciousness-based abilities. These all lead one to think that this is a possible uh, reason for uh, or possibility that he's part of that lineage. This question was asked of Christian Freiner, uh, one of the core group members close to Billy in Switzerland. And his reply was, I don't know, but logic suggests a yes with a smiley face. As far as the timeline goes of the known personages with this spirit form, it does not overlap with their lifetimes. And the years involved were approximately four and a half centuries after Emmanuel and a short 27 years between the death of Merlin and the birth of Muhammad. And with that, we end the presentation on Merlin, King Arthur, Excalibur and the Holy Grail. Perhaps with more questions than answers, but hopefully with some reorienting of our heretofore understandings of the glorified legends of King Arthur and his exploits. And these contacts of Billy's also serve to open another little window into a relatively unknown time of our history when a further effort was made to get the teaching of creation out via Merlin.
through to the human beings of the planet in order to offset our savage inclinations. So may we all find our own grail for quiet contemplation in order to further our own quest for peace, love, harmony, and freedom. Thank you very much. Thank you.